Hello everyone, Mark Sutton again, and uh, this tutorial will be about uh, basic painting stuff in Mudbox. Okay, we have this nice little head with um, with all the details. Uh, it's a quite a symmetrical model, so there's nothing special in it, but uh, this is absolutely without any painting uh, yet. So first of all, uh, you have to make sure that your model is ready to be painted. Uh, you need to create your materials uh, and create the UVs if you don't have them. So now take a look what we have here. The most important part is the head itself. So I will select the head from the object list as a model. Now it's highlighted and take a look at the image browser. So I'm um, sorry, UV view. Uh, this UV view shows that this head was uh, generated from the basic modbox head. So uh, actually I have the UVs, but what happens if I don't have it? What happens if I want to uh, create UVs? Now because we have it already here, uh, I will pick and select the hair. Uh, because the hair is drastically transformed and the UV view is not really matching to that transformation. So what I have to do is basically using the page down button to step down to the lowest level. It is important, you have to be on the lowest level. Uh, wireframes turn on, so this is our hair model uh, at the first stage. Uh, to create UVs, uh, you just have to quickly go up here to the menu UVs and maps and create UVs. Now, because by default we have it, we had it here, it's not an important model, it is uh, a sphere within Modbox. Uh, so I will just click on replace. I want to overwrite a uh, number of UV tiles. By default it's uh, one and it's uh, absolutely fine for us. It means we will uh, generate only one working tile uh, for this and every coordinate will be within that uh, work area. So it's one uh, work area. Now okay and voila it is done. Now take a look what we have here. In the UV view this model is selected. Uh, the model is split up and basically a uh, modbox created a layout for us. This is pretty hard if you want to paint it on manually, but because we are in 3D, uh, we have that luxury of using a standard painting method within 3D and don't worry at all about UV layouts. It's not ideal for production because of course you have many gaps and many um, uh, areas to, to cause some troubles, but uh, for a quick concept, uh, as we are looking for now, it is just fine. Okay, now first of all, uh, this was the basic method to create UV if you don't have it. Now, uh, before we are jumping in, create our first material for the eyes. Okay, uh, what happened um, when we start painting, just, just a quick test. If you just start painting and clicking on a head and you start drawing, it will ask what resolution you want and what channel you want. Again, we have only one material at the moment. So um, every texture that you paint will be shared within that material. So this means if I'm clicking a SAP OK, this 1K resolution texture, uh, and start painting, this paint will actually appear on everything, okay? So I will, I will start painting on a hair here and there, and as I do these little doodles, uh, you just have to recognize that because the material is the same on every model part, the texture will be as the same as a well. Okay, so to avoid this, you want to create separate material for the separate objects. Not true all the time uh, if you have not overlapping UVs, but if you have same UVs, it is really uh, could be a problem. Okay, now first of all, just uh, create a new material for the eyes. Okay. So I'm hovering over the eyes, right click, and because I want a new material, assign new material, Mudbox material will be just fine. 
Okay, I like to keep it a little bit uh, separated from the uh, normal stuff, so I like to keep it as a matte. It always indicates that this one is a material uh, because it's easier to find here in the object list. So I will rename it to matte and I. And the diffuse, usually it's better if it's just a simple white one. And now here comes a, tr a little bit tricky part, uh, specularity. So by default, this specularity is a little bit bluish. This blue color helps to imitate sunlight. So it is great, good for the eye, and it's good for sculpting, but it's not really good for painting. So uh, for this reason, we will switch this specularity to somewhere around at the gray zone. Now, take a look. This one is interactive now. So if I drag it down closer to the white, and this will be bright. And as I rotate the model, this shininess is just walking along with the eye. Okay. Now, is it okay? Is it good for painting? No, not really. Because uh, at, as soon as you start you creating your paint, it will just um, burn it out. Okay. So we want to regulate this one and push it up really high uh, to make sure that this is almost a matte material okay so just light highlight is enough okay so that's specularity now what is it about glossiness uh, glossiness is a little bit of a different animal and it will be important as soon as we are finished with the uh, painting okay so uh, it's fine for now. Now we'll close this and close this one as well. And um, okay, we have this eye material on one eye, but now take a look, select the other eye, right click, assign new. No, not new because we already created it. So this one is an existing material yet already. I'm clicking on existing material. Okay, it's just something like a bug. Existing and matte eye. Okay. Now, because we are just adjusted, everything is white, everything is the same, so it makes perfect sense. Um, because this texture is a little bit ugly, um, I want to get rid of it, so how to do that? I will tap with the paintbrush turned on, I will tap on ahead and go to the layers and right click and delete this uh, layer. Okay, now it is time to talk about something. You cannot, cannot delete the channel diffuse channel means it's the color channel and you directly you are not able to delete this one but if you are deleting the layer that's included in the diffuse channel this will be disappear okay so delete selected now everything is just clean and fine okay um, to do not mix up things I will lock out uh, the items I don't want to paint. So for that, uh, we have a couple options. First of all, right click above the model. You can lock unlock a model. So right click, lock unlock. Or you can hover over your cursor and press Shift F. Uh, this is the fastest way. Okay, the big uh, the card is not updated, so. Uh, we have this uh, issue here, but technically it's just uh, a video card issue. All right, we have the eyes here, and now just paint with it. The method I will use here as uh, one of the most popular stuff to create uh, realistic textures is projection. Uh, projection has the benefit of the capacity to use colored textures. Now, I already spent some time with it, and I have uh, this particular texture. And okay, here we go. This is Mud C. Double. Okay. This is a texture that I've been selecting. And uh, the brush is the projection brush. And it will be a stencil. Okay. So, stencil, this black ass. Uh, now, what happens? Uh, when I hit on stencil, it automatically updates my sidebar, so everything will be visible here. If, if I want to make uh, an inversion or anything like that, 
it is absolutely possible flipping um, something like that visibility changes are all there now take a look back at the 3d view and okay so we have this uh, texture uh, I don't want to create it yet so we have this texture and don't forget you can use Q to turn on and off uh, whenever you're holding down the S key you can manipulate the size of this texture now before we are actually jumping in uh, uh, my suggestion is just to try to center your model as you wish or actually you can directly go here in the object mode front view look through now we are in front so it's absolutely front okay it's too much it's cutting off already uh, Q or projection so okay uh, it requires a stencil again so I already made it but anyway because it's a different camera I had to uh, reorganize it so zooming in okay just taking a look adjusting it it's small but it will be there all right now it is fine maybe some height okay uh, now it's time to select a paint layer uh, this 1k paint on a diffuse channel because it's a color channel it will be just fine so I will apply an OK and zooming in and OK now it's not that super accurate because I guess yeah it is a little bit small so now take a look yes the size is just way too small intensity is also off don't forget when you are using stencils um, it's not ideal all the time to use the mirror so I have mirror off now this is the stencil stuff turning off Q going back to perspective right click look through okay here we go this is the eye that I've just created now before we are moving on on the next session let's take a look at the specularity and glossiness in a couple material adjustments so we have two materials one material is the default material on the head and the hair and everywhere else but we have this new newly created fresh material this is the material eye now specularity is grayish it is time to add more highlights to the eyes okay so to bring them um, some life okay this is this is it now when you're switched to the gloss gloss actually is about shininess but pay attention it looks like the gloss by default is fully black but it is not okay so when you turn it to full black what happens this artifact will occur okay it's uh, some kind of a demonic look as soon as you just slightly even the slightest way you drag this down now it will change okay uh, the amount that we are looking for is closer to the wider area now if you take a look this is some kind of a shininess that that really helps us to pop the eye okay you can play with this one so don't forget uh, for an eye material, it's ideally you have a quite bright specularity and almost uh, super white, and you have uh, you have a relatively high glossiness. Okay, now one thing before we are quit uh, of adjusting the eye is reflection strength. Uh, by default, there is a built-in reflection map, and this one is a spherical map. So when you turn on reflection strength. Um, uh, as you rotate uh, what happened why I don't see this okay so reflection strength actually it's just I don't have it one it's too much now is it active okay it was there was some kind of a bug okay uh, you want to keep it relatively low but uh, if you add it it will give this uh, kind of um, um, environmental reflection that uh, helps to to give some life uh, to this figure okay these are the very basic settings uh, for creating an eye material and painting an eye 
with the projection brush. Okay, next things uh, on the go.